this is Miss Andrea, and this is not another homeschool vlog. So, through the grapevine, um, I've been getting a lot of commentary on something called Shiny Happy People. And it is a documentary about what went on behind the scenes with the Duggar family, that famous or infamous a quiverful homeschooling family um, who had a run on TLC for years and years and then it was discovered that the oldest child the oldest boy had molested um, girls in the family um, and they had swept it under the rug and then um, later on it was discovered that he had child porn and he's in jail and so instead of ending the show gracefully, they forced the two older girls who had gotten married to do a spin-off called Counting On. Now, there's so much to unwrap, and this may be a several-part video because I can't think of anything. The first thing I can think of is, <sighs> I'm going to alienate myself from some homeschoolers. But I think this is the opportunity for me to say for the very last time, we are not that kind of homeschooler. We have never homeschooled for religious purposes. Um, we have been in church. We have been churched. We have been church leaders. We have never homeschooled with religion or child behavior or anyone obeying anyone in mind. We have homeschooled strictly for academics. That's who I am. That's how I homeschooled my kids. And that's how I help other people homeschool their kids. Um, specifically and strictly for academic college prep purposes. So let's just put that on the record for everyone to know. Um, homeschooling does not have to be religious based. Preferably, I would prefer that it weren't. Not my fight but anyone attached to me is doing it for academic purposes. And um, I started butting heads with other homeschoolers early in my homeschool journey um, and kind of got dropped by my homeschool mentor for this reason, because she or one of her friends would ask the question, how are the kids doing? And I would reply with, oh, this child perfected um, the spelling for their grade level or this child is, you know, at this function in math. And they would say, that's not what we mean. We don't judge by academics. Now, I was always like, okay, you know, and I would just carry on. And eventually they just got tired of the fact that my goal in homeschooling wasn't to have a child who was just smart enough to operate in the world, like go grocery shopping and maybe run a small business, and but who, you know, strictly obeyed parents and was obedient to parents. So don't think that I haven't been touched by these two people. Don't think that I still don't get touched by these people, but the service I provide um, and the way that I homeschooled my children was a lot more like tiger parenting than it was Christian homeschool parenting. Now, I don't remember what year the Duggars came into the American lexicon, what year that we became aware of them. Um, my kids were still in, in school. My kids were still homeschooling. But I remember like this huge quiverful movement in the country and the homeschool groups that we were in in my church where everyone who it seemed like was done having kids suddenly got pregnant again and had at least one more um and i having had a hysterectomy at about 33 was incapable of doing so and these people <laughs> encouraged me to get pregnant anyway. And I'd say, but I don't have a uterus. And they'd go, that's okay. There are miracles where children have been born that have gestated 
outside of the uterus. And I'm like, I'm pretty certain that would kill me. And um, if I do decide to have another kid, I'll adopt. Because at that point in time, until my youngest hit the tween years, um, I was super open to adoption. And um, then my youngest became a teenager and I wasn't open to adoption any longer. Um, so there's that. Now, topics that came up in this um, Shiny Happy People series. Um, religious abuse. Cult behavior. Um, in my opinion, child abuse. Um, um, excessive spanking. Um, older children being made responsible for babies. Um, and, and educational neglect of older children because their, their education was sacrificed um, to the younger children who they had to teach. Um, so these older kids really never got like any kind of college prep um, education and their, so their education was restricted. And, and so any chance of any of them maybe having a gifting or just being academically above the par was never explored because these children were forced to become child parents. Um, so that's mostly like, that's just within the Duggar family. If we step outside of the Duggar family to the cult that they belong to, um, let's forget the name of the cult. IBLP, a Christian organization that has been described by former members as cult-like. Um, IBLP has shared estimates that over 2 million, two million people have attended their seminars. Um, this cult, it is classified as a cult. Um, IBLP started off kind of like church retreats and they would travel around and go from church to church and have these seminars. And people would go to these seminars and hear about how to have these magically obedient families and go home and many would start homeschooling or many would just change the way they parented to be way more strict. Um, I'm 55, I was born in 68. This is not new because in about 75 or 76, my mother went to a seminar and um, I don't know who led it because this was a million years ago and my mother's no longer alive. But she came home with the idea that the cartoons we were watching were over-sexualized and I didn't watch TV for two years. I was not allowed to watch TV for two years and I wasn't reading yet. So I literally had nothing to do with my time but mischief and get in trouble because the kids in the family who it was decided were too impressionable for TV were just left to their own devices. I could have burned down the house. I, there's so many things I could have done unsupervised because I couldn't watch TV and be in the presence of the other kids in the family who were watching TV that, you know, and looking back and I'm like, that was some abusive nonsense. That was neglect. That was neglectful because someone somewhere had created the seminar that my mother went to and told them that, you know, we couldn't watch Popeye and we couldn't watch any of these cartoons because they were over-sexualized and they were going to destroy us. Being left alone to our own devices did a lot more damage, I promise you. So they went around, they convinced these families that they needed to follow their way. Um, they weren't a church per se, they were an organization. So they had all these camps and they had these young people organizations um, where they went and they would, some of these kids would go and work as young adults and um, there was a system of grooming young women and sexually abusing them within this system. That's cult behavior if I've ever heard it before. Um, and so, why do I care? 
um, because homeschooling is very important to me. And this nonsense um, puts homeschooling at an, in a really horrible light. And that's what I've been seeing on the interwebs that, you know, because of shiny happy people, homeschooling is about to take a major hit. Now, homeschooling has been taking hits for years, especially in child abuse cases. You know, child abuse happens in a public school family, and that public school family is the villain. Child abuse happens in a homeschool family, and homeschooling is the villain. And so here we are. Um, since COVID, homeschooling, however, has before COVID, absolutely, homeschooling started changing where a lot of African Americans were moving toward homeschooling because their children were just taking too many social and emotional hits at school. So that right there started changing the nature of homeschooling as a whole anyway. And then COVID came and parents really got a look at what was going on in school and felt like they could do more, do better, or do different. So now this current hit is going to reset some people and make some people step back and go, I don't want to be viewed that way, so I'm not going to do it. Um, however, um, what the documentary made clear to me is not all people should be homeschooling. And I've always known that and I've always said that. Um, if you can't give 100% of your attention to homeschooling, unfortunately, and or find an organization that you vet fully and then keep vetting and keep vetting and keep vetting because organizations change and evolve, um, then you shouldn't be homeschooling your kids because there are too many dangers out there when you are not in the center um, of that homeschooling journey as a parent. Homeschooling should never be a punishment for unruly children. Homeschooling should never be a way to isolate your children from the outside world. Homeschooling should never be a way to culturally separate your children from others. Um, homeschooling should never be centered in religious indoctrination. Um, nor should any type of education, right? Um, for me and for anyone who I advise, homeschooling is the avenue to get your kids into college with scholarships and to help personalize your children's education in a way that whatever gifts they have can be brought to the forefront. Now, if you watch Shiny Happy People, it's going to scare you because I had to watch it twice. There were things in that video that told me that I didn't have that many degrees of separation from what was going on here. First of all, homeschooling, right? So zero degrees of separation, right? Um, religious teaching. That whole God umbrella, husband umbrella, wife umbrella, children umbrella, um, heavily taught that at church. That originated in IBLP. Um, politicians I have voted for, um, affiliated. So, as I was saying, um, I know that I've been touched and I've been within just a couple of degrees of things that have gone on in this IBLP cult and this whole Duggar deal. I've already talked about people in my church kind of buying into the equivocal movement. Um, I've been told that the reason Christians need to keep having children is to outnumber the Muslims. Um, I think that's wild and that, that never sat well with me. Um, the hierarchy of the family, um, older children being expected to raise and teach younger children, um, being grilled 
as to why I was sending my daughter to college at 16 and how I should be keeping her at home to be preparing for a marriage. Um, organizations that I'm currently a part of um, were shown on the screen. And so now I need to do further investigation in that. Um, and I think this particular organization that I'm currently a part of is a service organization. And um, it was in the background of one of the politicians who was kind of close to the Duggar family. It just could be a coincidence, but I need to know more. Um, so it's, it's gonna feel familiar. Um, and it might scare you. Uh, my advice, as always, is to deeply investigate any red flags that you have and adjust should you need to. That's what I'll be doing. So let's talk about this. Let's like really have a conversation about this. I don't want this to be the end of it. I really want people to challenge me. I really want to have points to think on here um, and respond more fully, more better. But I do know this. I know that I've never been okay with the Carifal movement. I've never been okay with the centering of the Duggars in our modern culture. I've never been okay with the 15 minute um, segments on my favorite morning show, the Today Show, the featuring the Duggars, with this woman having child after child after child to the detriment of her health. And the, the last couple of kids, you know, having clearly what seemed like some defects. Um, I just always found it always very suspect and creepy. I always found the oldest boy suspect and creepy. Like when they sent him away to this camp thing, the way it was being centered and shown, because I used to watch it, seemed suspect and creepy. And I just got to a point where I think I watched it for a year and I couldn't watch it anymore because it just didn't feel right. Um, if something doesn't feel right to you, shut it off. Um, because so many of us didn't shut it off. Um, it became pervasive in our culture and has a rippling effect. There are other topics and I'll, I'll see if I can't go through them and pull them out and discuss them. But uh, that documentary, Shiny Happy People, is wild. And whether you homeschool for whatever reason you homeschool, I highly recommend you watch it. And um, take note, don't be defensive, just take note. Do I fit into this? Um, am I affected by this? Are there things I need to change? Um, and if you feel that there's nothing you need to change and you're happy with the whole deal, good for you. But as for me and mine and those that I touch in counseling homeschooling, not in my house. <laughs>